Okay, so nagsa-start ka sa programming, marunong ka na mag-for loops, marunong ka na mag-if-else, tapos bigla sa eskwela nyo, bigla na lang nagpa-requirement ng ganito, recursion. Tapos nakakalito, hindi mo alam pa paano gagawin, and madalas nangyayari, uh, basta I'll learn the bare minimum, and then I'll completely forget about it after natapos yung course. Okay? And personally, ayoko yun, na kinakalimutan nitong very important tool in programming na hindi masyadong nade-discuss, even online. So, here, I'll show you yung pinaka-basics ng recursion. Personally, para sa akin, hindi nagmamatter yung language, pero the best way I could teach recursion is through Python. Okay? If you want me to discuss it in a different language, uh, send me an email, sali ka sa Discord server namin, send ka na message, and I will gladly help you out. Based from my experience, uh, a lot of my colleagues, uh, a lot of my classmates, maraming nahihirapan sa recursion. Uh, mahirap siya i-understand and uh, syempre kung di tayo sanay, mahirap mag-solve thinking in this way na mag-call tayo ng function inside the function. So, let's get right into it. Uh, itong problem na I prepared, bale, nagtatanggap siya ng input na ganito, ganito yung format. Ito yung test cases, right? Test cases which is 3, no? the first number. And then followed by that is the numbers na gusto natin maharap yung factorial. Uh, expect na natin yung output 1, 720, 50, 40. Okay? Tapos, pansinin natin kung pa paano natin implement to. Test cases, kunin yung input. And then for every for every test case, kunin yung input ulit. And then calculate yung factorial. Print it. Okay? Paano natin yung kinaculate yung factorial? Meron tayong una result, which is 1. And then for every i from 0 to n minus 1, no? okay, kasi ganyan yung range, i-multiply natin siya by this plus 1. Okay? Plus 1 natin yan kasi syempre, hindi tayo aabot kay n kung hindi natin siya plus 1. Basically, ganyan yan, plus 1, then plus 1 here. And ayaw naman natin makuha si 0 kasi magiging 0 siya. Okay, so simple enough. Buka natin siya pi3 of py pasok natin tong input natin no? make sure na save siya so yun tama siya okay 1 7 20 and 50 40 syempre in every recursion class ito yung prime example nila factorial kung hindi factorial fibonacci so ko convert natin to ng recursion so una pansinin natin na yung factorial Basically, isa, isa siyang math function no, na f of n and then return parang for 1 to n multiply or something, right? Well, another way to look at it is kunyari f of n, no? It's basically parang n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus whatever, no? Hanggang kay 1. Well, kung titignan mo ngayon to, this is basically just f of n minus 1. No? So, marire-define natin yung function natin to n times n, f of n minus 1, sorry. If it's f of 1, just return 1 na lang. Okay? So, marire-define natin siyang ganito. No? The definition. Over here. So, we have two cases na ito. If it's greater than 1, no? if n is greater than 1, or if n is equal to 1. So, paano natin siya i-code nyo yun? So, first off, sige, subukan natin to. So, factorial n, the return na lang natin, n times factorial n minus 1. So, we will have a problem with this. Kapag kinol natin to, hindi siya matatapos. So, I'll prove that to you right now, na makaka-error tayo. Ayun niya, maximum recursion depth. Later on, I'll discuss this. So, balik tayo dito. Kung ganito lang yung function natin, syempre, hindi siya matatapos. Okay? So, what we need is to have like some sort of breaking point. So, this is it. No? Ito, hindi siya matatapos kasi we will be calling f forever. Ito, we're not calling f in any way. Magre-return lang tayo ng some base value, which is 1. Tawag natin dito, actually, is the base case. And dito, dahil we're calling the function recursively, 
tawag natin dito is recursive step. Okay? So, naka-implement na yung recursive step natin dito. Nakikita natin here, oh, nakakall yung factorial. Pero yung base case, hindi pa. So, let's implement that really quick. So, if n is equal to 1, no? then just return 1. So, alisin natin yan para makompile na maayos. And, valid syntax. Let me call it. So, yan. 1, 7, 20, 50, 40. Okay. So, ganyan yung recursion. What we did is, we defined the function in terms of itself. Okay? Kaya recursion yung tawag. Kasi, yung definition ng function natin, may kasama siyang pag-call sa sarili. Okay? So, it's important to note na any problem na nasusolve na iteration, nasusolve din ng recursion. So, ngayon, ano yung mga pros and cons ng recursion over iteration? So, pros muna. Una, it's very elegant, right? Very readable. Pangalawa, if the problem's naturally recursive, for example, yung factorial function natin, naturally recursive yan, no? by nature, it's recursive, usually it's better na ma-implement siya in a recursive way. Third is, if you know about function scopes, no? kunyara yung n natin in this case, is naka-define siya for that call of the function itself. Right? Kunyara, call ako ng pangalawang factorial b, Yung n dito, magkaiba siya sa call natin ng n here. No? So parang contained siya yung n natin dito. So what happens there is, mas safe yung code natin from bugs. Yung mga cons naman, well, una, mahirap siyang pag-isipan. Second is, it uses more memory regardless. Okay? So balik tayo sa recursive definition natin ng factorial. No? So sabi mo sa akin, oh, Carlos, wala man yang ginamit na variable dyan. No? Actually, parameter lang ng function. Yung problema is every time na nakakall to, so kunyari 7 yung ino natin dyan, no? 7 yung input. So 7 times factorial 6, no? And then si factorial 6 magiging 6 times ano, factorial 5. So on and so forth, no? Hanggang kay 1. No? Hanggang magpunta yan kay 1. So kung ilan to, nakastore lahat yan. Hindi siya kagaya nung for loop natin kanina na yung result, napapatungan siya. No? Kasi yung result kanina, dyan, tapos napapatungan lang siya ng 2, nagiging 2 na yan, tapos mapapatungan siya ng 3. Hindi na natin sinustore yung bawat increment ni n. Ito, hindi. Nakastore yan lahat. So, gumagamit siya ng memory. no? So, natandaan nyo yung sinabi ko kanina na any problem na iteration, masasolve na recursion. Okay? So, i-prove ko sa inyo yun ngayon. Kung hindi kayo makapaniwala. For example, ito. May iteration pa yan. So, sige. Alisin natin yung iteration. Okay? Gawin natin, gawin natin recursion. Okay? Nagawa tayo ng function. No? Solve test cases. So, ano yung mga gusto natin? Kunyari may base case tayo. Saka may recursive step. No? So, yung base case natin. If test cases are 0. No? Or is 0. Then, gagawin natin, wala. Do nothing. No? Just return. Pero kung yung test cases natin are greater than 0, then, what we want to do is get input, then print factorial, and then call natin si solve uh, test cases minus 1. Okay, so gawin natin yan. Base case muna. No? If test cases equals 0, uh, return. Wala tayong gagawin. So, else, dito sa recursive step, kunin natin yung input, isolve natin yung, ano, and then call solve test cases minus 1. So, gano'n natin yan na ganyan. Tapos ito, gano'n nga yan, solve test cases. So, kung susubukan natin yan, so, gano'n gumagana yung basics na recursion. May base case ka, and then may recursive step ka. So, base case, recursive step, base case, recursive step. Sa so, next, episode, next video natin, discuss natin kung paano tayo mag-solve ng mas complex na problem. For example, isang Sudoku board. Okay? Using recursion. If you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments below. Or sumala kayo sa Discord server namin na nasa description din. If you like the tutorial, please leave a like or subscribe. Thank you.